nobody else, just be yourself When you look up in the mirror, I pray you see yourself Pray you see your worth and I pray you see some wealth Wanna free yourself, gotta always be yourself You ain't gotta be nobody else, just be yourself When you look up in the mirror, I pray you see yourself What up, dog? Yeah. Oh, dude, what's good with you, bro? Oh, good, man. Can you hear me? Can you hear me good? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, thing going with you. Ah, right, yeah, we good, brody. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Good to see you, man. It's been a minute. How long has it been? Well, about two, about two, three years almost. It's been three years. I've been out in AZ for three years. Man. It's crazy, bro. It, 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 it look like it's doing good for you, though. Yeah, man, AZ been good, bro. I, I can't complain. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Why, why, why? Well, that's one of my questions. I don't want to get. I don't want to get all the way into it yet. But yeah, um, I mean, do you want to introduce yourself? Cause I'm, I'm recording this, so you know. Oh, you're recording too right now. Okay. Well, yeah, man. My name is uh, Matt Mills, also known as Don Miliano. That's crazy because I really haven't even uh, got too deep into Don Miliano and what that is and what I plan to do with that name. But uh, we can we'll we'll talk more about that later. But um, yeah, man, Matt Mills from Peoria, Illinois. You know, uh, shoot, man, I'm a creative director. Do a lot, you know. what I'm saying a lot of different things. I'm sure that's probably some questions that you got as well. Most definitely, most definitely. He he being he being modest right now, y'all. So you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I got I gotta I gotta put I'm a little bit on it. I don't be knowing where to start, bro. You know what I'm saying. Well, let's start with marketing strategies. You feel me? Let's start with public relations. Let's start with graphic designer. You feel me? Let's start with brand builder. You understand? Let's start with photographer, creative director, event planner. I mean, I did. I did, I, did, I, did, I did keep it going. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's trying to be modest. You know what I'm saying? I love that you did your research, bro. That's what's I up, man. To. I got to, bro. I got to, cause it's like it's so many of us that get overlooked, bro. You know what I'm saying? Especially like where we come from, how we how we how we came up, bro. We don't deserve to be overlooked at all, bro. You know what no. I'm saying? So this is what I'm doing. This is the platform that I'm trying to have. It's just to shed more light on the people that, you know, should be getting shed light on. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you are one of them. You feel me? Like you you've always been out here in the trenches, bro. You know what I'm saying? Always moving and shaking. Every time I sent you, you know what I'm saying? Every time we meet, it was always one of them moments. You know in the movement, we, we both just networking and we just yeah. ran into each other. Yeah. yeah. From we, Chicago. We into, we into that in Chicago and all that, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we all up. around, man. Yeah. So, uh, but everything been good with you, though. Man, everything been good, bro. Got this fashion show that I'm putting together, man. This is actually my first fashion show that I'm doing in Arizona. Uh, it's called Arizona Trending. And I'm just doing a fashion series. Basically, I got like three three stylists, three designers, and uh, they're just going to be showcasing their work. The main thing about this fashion series is I want to be able to find a way to get, you know, the city, uh, you know, together, to bring the, the city together. Because we even when I first moved out here to Arizona, I came out here, I was like, man, where's the culture at? Like, there's no culture yeah. here. And people yeah. be like, there's no culture in Arizona. Right. So, I mean, it's a lot of culture. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just like you said, everything's getting overlooked. Arizona's coming up. It's on a rise. The Super Bowl's yeah. going to be here in two years. So yeah. people got to start moving, thinking about different ways to, to, to get in tune. You said and the Super Bowl? Yeah, the Super Bowl. Okay. Super Bowl's going to be in Arizona in two years. So basically what I got going on with Arizona Trending is uh, I started a concierge company for Arizona where people that are traveling to Arizona, whether, no matter where you're coming from, you can be able to go to ArizonaTrending.com and find out what's trending. If you want to find okay. out you know, what the best restaurants to go to, the, uh, the most trending events where the culture is at, um, you know, just the finding a photographer or whatever you want to get in tune with, they'll be able to go on ArizonaTrending.com. They can either speak to an agent where a culture guy will call them like, hey, we see you're going to be out here from this date to this date. What are you looking to do? And we're going to put together an itinerary for all of our clients of things to possibly do you know, from the best restaurants, um, if they want a, a nightlife, if they want to go out, if they're an artist coming out here and they want to find a studio, we can get them in a studio, we can get them a feature, you know, we'll get them in luxury cars, we'll get models for, for the girls. Arizona Trending is that platform where culture is, is going to be 
um, where culture is is basically going to be in that platform. So yeah. that's what I got going on. And um, I'm going to be doing fashion series, music series, sports series, try to get camps involved to get the kids going, you know. So I'm just trying to uh, get into this uh, community as much as I can. And I feel like starting this company here is on the trending and I already got investors. I got people that's already looking out, already got contracted companies, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited just to stay busy, you know, create something like man. that's where I joy is from creating, you know? Yeah. I can relate. I can relate to that, man. Like, but that's, that's major. Like I'm, I'm thinking like I probably you probably didn't already thought this way, but like that that business model alone can be scaled and took into other markets as well. You know what I'm saying? I already know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I like I don't want to get too deep yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's deep, bro. That's I like that, bro. And that's that's outside the box. That's very much valuable. That's very much needed. So you know, whenever I come AZ, whenever I come your way, I'm definitely gonna be like, yeah, I need to get in one of them labs. I need to get one, I need to get one of them whips you talking about, you know. We're in tune, bro. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Look, we're gonna be launching a website, man, uh, next year in uh, January. Right. So once we get that uh, website out, man, you know what I'm saying? You hit me up, bro, and yeah. I'll, I'll put you on tune. But for everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Uh, man, bro, it's, it's gonna be an outlet where everybody can come out here and have the best experience for Arizona, you know? That's solid. Yeah. So my first question for you, man, is uh, so we I, we both know you started as a as a party promoter, right? <laughs> I started throwing house parties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to, yeah, I try to, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody watching is gonna be like, no, this nigga would start as no promoter. He started doing house parties. <laughs> I mean, hey, we should get them but, it's, jumping. <laughs> but it's the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, once you finally, I don't want to tell your story for you, but like, once you get that, once you got in there, I, I know you saw the the similarities. Like, it's, it's you ain't doing them, but what you was doing. No, it's the same exact thing, fam. It's just all about connecting, bro, staying in tune with people. Yeah. You know? Yes, it started off all this house parties with the mob. Everybody wanted to come to a mob party. Right. Uh, you know, just evolve. I got into my mindset, like, man, I could, like, People really rock with me. I got a, I got a skill. I got a talent. So I just kept kept going with it, kept going with it, found out more skills, found out more talents, and just kept going to a point where, like, my second nature was me grinding. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a place to to, to, to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? To, to mm. settle. Like, my mind is just being on go mode for mm. the past 10 years. So I'm like, I'm always trying to create new ideas trying to find different ways in which I can get in tune with people, man. Cause I love people. Most definitely. Yeah. That's, that's, that's deep, bro. Like when you said like, when you, the way it mean when you said, uh, your mind been on go mode for like the past 10 years, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I, when I'm in that mode all the time, but it's like, should I not be, sometimes I'll be thinking like, man, should I not be in that mode? Should I be like, but you know, like you said, it's like, I don't really have that. Like, I don't have the space to do that. Like, I don't have the, you know, that's not my reality for me to just take a back. I don't even know how, what, I, you see how it's taking me, to, I can't even describe it. Like, how do you do it? You know what I mean? What is, what is the word to use to not, like, be in, in that mindset of just, like, on go? Just staying know? stagnant. I, like, I don't want to stay stagnant. I don't want to be stagnant, you know? It's yeah. Just, I don't know. Grinding, hustling. You know, you hustling, you creating you know i mean it's just a mindset that you gotta you gotta reach it might take time you know what i'm saying whatever you're doing but you gotta you gotta reach that you gotta reach that that mindset that you're always in, in go mode once you reach there sky's the limit to whoever to who that is you know yeah like, that's not that you really do anything so tell me about the story of how you spent 4300 flipped it to 30k and through one of the most epic events Peoria has ever seen. Man, and I still got footage of that. So if you don't believe it, it's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, that was um that was really the event that got me started with with everything, you know, just to um create an event in my city and my hometown. This was the, this was I wouldn't say the first official event because I threw an event with DJ Exclusive. Uh, for uh, it was a December. It was snowing. That was my first event, and my, this was my second event where 
Uh, it's it spent. I spent three hundred dollars. That was the budget for everything. That's lights, liquor, um, you know, everything. The venue was free. I ended up just getting that venue for free. Just got wow. blessed with it. So blessing. Yeah. Uh, we ended up doing a party. Yeah, ended up taking you know the party to the next level. It was probably like eight hundred to a thousand people there. Um, but yeah, that event right there changed my life. You know, we had performances. We had free alcohol, um, and. I really got a chance to see what I could do at that event. You know what I'm saying? And that opened my eyes to just, you know, the possibilities of being an entrepreneur and the money that you can bring in by not even working a job. You know, if you stay consistent, you got to hustle. I could do five parties and make a hundred thousand dollars, you know, a year. But um, it was a good event, you know, uh, it was my second event, so, you know, of course, not everything went perfect, got money stolen from me, stuff like that, but uh, people have fun. People still talk about it to this day. You know, I do want to get back active out there in Peoria, too, so once I once I get things right here, you know, I'm, I'm back in my city, man, buying property, trying to, trying to find ways to invest back into this community. Hey, we on the same thing, man. Like, that's that's exactly what I'm on, man. You So, I know you got the, I know you got the, this kind of off topic, I ain't got this in my notes, but... I see you got the crib, right? You say you got two of them now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the crib here, man. I'm still getting it together, but, you know, it's a little player. Yeah. It's a little player. This is going to be called the art house, so I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it right. It's a three-story crib, you know what I'm saying? But Yeah. You in there. Yeah, I'm just getting it together, though. Is it a work? Is it a workhouse? Is it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna, we going to flip it to actual work, too, or... It, uh, so I plan in two years, I'm going to turn it into an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'll be like an Airbnb. I'll be able to like rent it out, but I just want to get it. Like if I'm going to name it the art house, I got, I got to get art in here. So no, I'm about, I got, I got a couple of easels. I'm about to start getting some work done. Probably have a couple of paint nights with some people that, that I know is real good at it and try to turn this crib into an art house for sure. You know, that's right. How did you, how did you go about like acquiring the property? Did you, did you go to an agent or? Um, yeah, I went through an agent, mommy, uh, Tanner, Tanner. Um, so if you ever need some property, man, out here in Arizona, he, he gonna get you right. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I went through my agent and uh, he, he got me right. That's one foul. That's one foul. Yeah. So you started managing artists, I heard. Well, um, I wouldn't say managing artists. I used to actually manage artists back when I had PVO Entertainment. Yeah. And uh, that's when, when I really kind of like, got into managing artists when I, when it was with Corey, Corey Cartier, Dyricus, Prada, uh, Maytown, you know what I'm saying? That's when I was working with them. But um, now I'm basically just kind of doing PR for J-Rob the Chief. And he's like a trending uh, artist out here in Arizona. He's probably like one of the, like, the most known artists out here in Arizona. Mm. So yeah, I'm just doing PR for him, trying to get him out there. We're trying to get him into the industry. I linked him up with a couple of my investors and they're like, oh yeah, we got to endorse this kid. So they're putting money behind them. You know, um, the whole, we, we got a whole team behind them. So we just I linked in with him. I tapped in with him uh, last night, matter of fact. Yeah, you yeah. Uh, on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing my research, you know. I tapped yeah. in, you know, I seen that was one of your, one of your people you were working with. So I'm like, let me, let me lock in with him, you know. Yeah. It's definitely a, it's definitely a contact sport. This entrepreneurship, definitely. And how I met him was crazy. I met him. Um, I was actually promoting this this party, and uh, we was all chilling in this room. It was like a hotel. We had the whole hotel. People renting out rooms and everything. And uh, we was in this room all just hanging out. And this this lady comes in, just crying. She said, "Oh, I can't believe it's really you." She was literally crying. And it, for J-Rob, I'm like, dude, <laughs> like people, people crying over him? Who is this dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we ended up, like, uh, chopping it up. His baby mama is actually, uh, she was, like, one of my really good friends when I first moved out here. So we become uh, acquainted. She introduced me to him. And since then, we just hit it off. Yeah. You, know? you see my creative mind, you know, the views that, that I want to do for Arizona. And he don't rock with everybody. So the fact that, you know, we kind of clicked right. and hit it off, bro, I was like, yes, it's meant to be. You gonna build, you know. And uh, linking with him, I shot I shot my first music video, uh, called "Remember" by by J. Rob the Chief and Mac the Pharaoh. So if that's on YouTube, if you want to check it out. But yeah, that's really how I started getting into videography, shooting videos. It's just the inspiration of being around, being being around people, being in the scene, 
and just wanted to do more, you know, wanted to be an asset to the people around me. Right, right. So when you were, well, I don't know if, how you want to label when you was managing artists, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. when you was working with artists or whatever, well, you still are. But, yeah, um, I still work, man. When you, well, let's say when you was doing the PBO move, yeah. like, what was the most challenging, was it PBO or POV? It was a PVO positive vibe only. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure I get it right. But um, when you was when you was in that when you was in that phase, like what was the most challenging part about that? Like what what was some of the ma- like main the biggest challenges you faced? Man, just managing artists itself is just <laughs> kind of stressful because they got their personalities. You know, you know when I when I manage somebody, and this is why I really don't like managing. When I manage somebody, like I'm on top of it. I'm in go mode, like, like I told you. So like, if that artist isn't in go mode, I, I, I'm just like, I'm not interested in, in, in working with you, you know, because right. you know, we got quotas, we got a hit. I need music out at a certain time. You know, we need music videos. And if you don't got the schedule, if you don't take yourself serious, um, you know, to, to the point that I do, then, you know, it, it just really didn't work out. I'm not saying they didn't, but it was just challenging working, juggling so many different artists and so many different people at the same time, their schedules, stuff like that, personalities, yeah, all at the same time yeah. by myself, you know? Yeah. So we had producers, we had, I, I was doing photography, but we had, we had a crew of people where we can get music made and stuff, but uh, the most challenging part was, you know, I guess just working with everybody as a unit you know, the unit all has to be on the same page. You got a camp, you got a crew, they all got to be on the same page. If it's not, then, uh, you know, it's, it's just a click that's going to fade. Every click that you know, you know, faded because they didn't move as a unit. Mm. You, know, you got to move militant, you know what I'm saying? As you being in a crew, y'all got to have certain, um, um, you know, certain expectations as far as, you know, just how to move. You got to move right, you know, so... Uh, we all grown up. We all grown up out of that. I was at that just that point at that point in time where I was just wanting to do everything and find a way to to build my city up, you know. But it all went its uh, its own way for a reason. I still rock with every single one of those artists: Prada, yeah. Corey, Darikis, them all my guys, all my brothers. Salute you know, to them too. So salute to them. Salute to all them. Yeah, you know if they ever need anything from me, man, they can call me. So I'm trying to get them out to AZ. You know, yeah. So. But like you say, you know, everybody got to want it. Like, you can't want it more than the actual person. You know, I've seen that uh-huh. first hand. Like, you can't fight for a person that don't want to fight for themselves. And not to say that that's their situation, but like I say, that was some of my situation that I, I had going on with certain team members that I had, you know, at, at one point. It was like certain people were just more comfortable with just pointing and telling you, hey, you need to start doing this, you need to do this. But it's like, when that finger is pointed back from me, like, hey, y'all need to start doing this, it's like, it's not received with the same energy that you had when you was pointing me. Exactly. You know? And it's exactly. like, okay. And then just that whole energy shift will kind of slow down the whole process of everything. And once you realize that, like you say, you kind of just gotta make a, a judgment call, you know what I mean? I was just like, you know what, y'all? And I had a meeting where everybody said, hey, you guys, just like, y'all know it's all love, but I just needed to focus on myself. I needed to build myself before I could build anybody else up. And that's where a point that, that I was at. Even though I, I kind of reached my pinnacle in Peoria, you know, there was still so much more that I wanted to do within myself. So I had to build myself up. And when I get to that point where I can build other people up, I want to help everybody that I can, you know, yeah. which I can in the industry. I want to be able to help anybody out, you know? That's facts. So what's like, what's the, uh, I'm, I heard you mentioned PR earlier. Like what's the, what's the role of a PR for artists like in these times that we living in now? Like, how does that look? So basically um, what I do for J-Rob is just a little bit of, of everything, mainly like public relations. So that's just uh, getting him out there to, to the world as, as much as I can from my events, um, we're coming up with like email templates, uh, you know, just to send out to these different companies, uh, you know, just so, just to get his uh, music out there. So we're just trying to find different like marketing ways just to get his, uh, just to get his music out, di- different distribution deals, stuff like that. Um, we're working on trying to get his music in um, the UFC. 
because he got like the couple songs with Sugar Sean and T. Willie, all them. So, uh, you know, just basically just trying to get him out there to the general market and in the industry. So I'm just doing like a lot of the behind the scenes, um, using my resources, my connects for him, you know. I like to call that a picture frame, you know, because everybody, I say, I say everybody got, everybody wants to be the picture. Everybody wants to be the person that's, that we see, you know, mm -hmm. but that picture always has to have a picture frame because the picture frame is, is, is what allows the picture to be seen. It puts it in position to be seen exactly. and, and nobody wants to it's not too many people want to play that role so i like i say i salute that man like just the the, the i don't even know the word i would say the humility you know what i'm saying to be like you know because you a picture in your own on your own space you know what i'm saying but yeah. you know when to you know put the picture on or put the frame on you know what I, I'm saying? yeah i know my position i know my position and i play a, a, a lot of different positions you know and being a part of uh, J Rob's team, and that's just one little position. But J Rob knows, like, and we talk about this, like, we don't need each other. <laughs> we right. don't. He don't need right. me. I don't need him. You know, none, none of us need each other. It's just the fact that we all come together because we're all so active doing our own thing. We know that rocking, each, rocking with each other is going to better all of us. That's, you know? And that's the best part. That's the main point of coming together. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. It's good just to build, you know what I'm saying? But I like that. I like how you said a picture frame because you're right. You can sell somebody a picture and it, it might not look that appealing. You put that frame on it, you could up the price. Yeah. 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 And, and, and not only that, how many pictures get seen that's not in the frame? That's fine. Think, think how many pictures you've seen <laughs> that's not in, you know what I'm saying? You don't really see them. Like they don't, they don't really get seen. They get seen because somebody put it in a frame put it up, hammered this nail on the on the wall and set that joint right there. And now everybody, every time somebody come in, it's like, oh, so-and-so, you know, check that out, you know? And you look at the picture, but you ain't look at the fact that it's somebody who put that in that frame and put that on that wall, you know? So a lot of people want that. They want to be known for, hey, I'm the one who put, you know, I'm the one who, but when you a frame, it's like it's not even about that. It's about the fact that you're recognizing the picture. And yeah. that's the whole point. You know what I'm saying? If you recognize the picture, you recognize me. You know, and that's and that's cool. You ain't gotta say my name. I don't need no, you know, we winning. We winning as as a team, as a unit, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Man. That's a that's a dope concept. Um when I read your story, man, one thing that stood out to me was uh your ability to recognize the value of things that are already around you, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and put it together to, to, to try to bring value to others. Like, what, what would you say that ability came from? How, how did you learn that? Like, how did you learn that skill? Well, I wouldn't even say it's a skill. I always say it's more of like a mindset. Yeah, man, this fashion show is like a week away, so my phone is over here going off. I had to put it on. Yeah, That's right. yeah. but um, I, I would say it's like more of a mindset, and, and it kind of all started when I was in Peoria, when I started to get myself in that positive vibe only mindset. That's when I first started posting and promoting PVO, and, you know, I feel like my mindset at that point was positive vibes only. You're freezing up, bro. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? I hear you though, but you, your your vision, your visual part of it, kind of frozen. All right, my back. No, it's still it's still frozen. Let me see. Huh. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Okay. My back. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so. Um. But yeah, bro. I would say back in in Peoria, you know, when I was was on, when I was really heavy on that PBO. I feel like it was more of a mindset, you know, the fact that, you know, you think positive, positive things are, are, are really going to happen. And that's how I looked at life. That's how I, you know, really looked at my job, at my career, you know, my skills and my assets. You think positive, positive things are going to happen. So that kind of just opened up my mind to like, you know, just the value of life, you know, all, 
everything in life from people, places, wherever you go, wherever, every, everything that has a shape has some type of energy, you know, and you can get, you, there's, there's, I don't want to get too deep, but there's, uh, talk that shit, talk that shit, bro. Yeah, but there's, there's, there's value in every single thing, whether it's a cup, a plastic cup, you're going to use that plastic cup to drink on. That plastic cup might cost 99 cents, but it's, it's a value. So if you train your mind to look at the positive in everything, you know, and even if there's negative things, there's always positive in the negative. You get negative things, uh, you get positive things from negative things, experiences. So, you know, the fact that I train my mind to look at things like that, and I know at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason, you know, uh, regardless of what happens. And I really just got, got in that mindset to a point where I use that in my daily life, in my networking, people that I meet. You know, um, I feel like I can add value to anybody that I meet just because I've built my skills to a par, you know, to to where I can meet anybody right now and be able to offer them something or be able to help them out in something in life. Just because of my skills and and what I acquired and what I taught myself throughout the years, whether it be photography, graphic design, videography, doing an event for them, helping their business out, help help them generate leads, you know. Whatever it is, I feel like anybody I meet, I can potentially add value to like that. Um, and yeah, it just it just goes with it with the energy, you know, knowing knowing your skills and knowing what what you can do. You know, I feel like that that's a major part. You got to know yourself first. That's that's a lot. Of, that's a lot to take in, man. Uh, I'm definitely gonna replay this joint after we get done and uh, soak that up a little bit deeper. Um, yeah. Cause that was definitely a lot of value. What I wanted to say though, is like, I think, cause what I'm getting from your answer, it sound like you really, you really, it was like you said, it wasn't really a skill per se. It was more like, more of like a, maybe I'm wrong, but it, it sounded like more like a response from what you were seeing. You know what I mean? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Like energy wise and just, the current moment, you know what I mean? This is this is what's needed, and I have that. It all started at that point of my mindset changing. Once you change your mindset, you can change your reality. You know, you change your mindset to think positive, positive things are going to happen. So, yes, it started with my mindset, and me just doing that, it, I wanted to learn how to do everything. I wanted to learn all of the skills it took. You know, I started off doing photography. I was like, you know, I'm getting bored. I'm good at it. I want to learn videography because that's big. I start teaching myself and I taught myself all this, you know, and um, yeah, it just really starts with your mindset, learning, you know, what you want to do. Not everybody wants to do photography or graphic design. So you might have a whole different path than uh, somebody, but um, it all just starts with that positive thinking, to be honest, you know, and allowing those, those positive energies in your life. You know, you around motivated people, people like me, that's that's going to talk to you and motivate you. And that's what you need. You know, then you're going to be motivated. If you're around people that's going to drag you down, you're going to be dragged down. You know what I'm saying? You are wh who you hang around. You are your environment, product of your environment. So you, I heard you say, like, when you when you when you change your mindset, how did you get to that point? Like, what was your mindset before prior to that? And how did you get? to the point where you made that shit. My bad, my bad, you uh, were kind of breaking up there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can you hear me? Okay. Um, I think the question was like, what, what really made my mind shift into that mindset? Right, and what was it prior to the shift? Like how was your mindset before then? Well, just like you said earlier, bro, we kind of grew up from a place where, you know, where you don't really think like that, you know? And, um, uh, you know, I feel like when I was when I was really in the streets and when I was working at Shell gas station, a lot of people might might not know, but a lot of people that's probably watching this might see it and be like, yeah, I remember him. I used to work at Shell gas station and uh, I was, you know, I was getting money out the gas station, you know, and that right there, you know, brung a lot of positive things because I, I was getting money. And because I was getting money, I was throwing parties, I was doing all this, but at the same time, people seeing me like you in know, my territory. So people used to always want to hit me up, try try to rob me. Nobody ever got my shit though. I'm gonna yeah. tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
But like, yeah, so like that right there, um, just putting myself in that lifestyle, I'm like, you know what, this did this ain't for me. I don't want it. I got in trouble. I ended, I ended up getting getting popped off for, with like 22 grams in separate baggies and ended up doing a, just a little time, you know what I'm saying? But I got in trouble. But that right there really changed my life. You know, that little negative thing, like I talked about, that little negative thing changed my life to really move different. And it changed my mentality. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to be in that, in that same spot. So I taught myself how to do things the right way, you know, um, build business. I love business. So then I started doing things the right way. Yeah. But that right there really kind of like changed my mindset to, to think different. And I feel like to think positive, it, it can happen like that. It can right. happen like that. You just got to, you got to have control of your mind. If you don't have control of your mind then you got to figure something out, <laughs> okay. you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't have control in, of their mind. That's why they're in the same place. A lot of my friends that I grew up with, they don't, they don't have control of their mind. They're still in the same place that, that they were 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So you control your mind, man. You can do anything, man. You got the power to, to do anything. Yeah. I think, I think based on what you're saying and and my own experience with that as well, like, it's like, it gotta be like a good enough motivator. You know what I'm saying? Something has to like motivate you strong enough to make you do something different than you've ever done you know what i'm saying like for yeah. you it was that it was that at run in you know what i mean with mm-hmm. with law you know for others it may be something else but it's it i feel like it's it's always got to be that one thing that that comes and like shatters your glass in a way like you know what's crazy is i think and i said a lot but one of the main reasons that, you know, that I am where I, I'm at as well is also because of God, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I grew up in the church. <laughs> you know, I, I grew up in the church. My dad's a pastor. So I, I grew up in the church. Once I had a certain grade, we ended up moving to the East Bluff and just was kind of just around the wrong people, you know. But <laughs> I kinda, but I kind of had to, 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 you know, stray off a little bit just to find myself and experience and but the main thing is I, I always kept that kept that God in me, kept that mentality, you know, um, and that's that's been a really, really big game changer in my life as well, man, because of my relationship with God as well. Man, I can agree. I can I can agree to that as well, man. Like sometimes we, we feel like nobody's watching, but it's somebody always watching, somebody always God. And, you know, what I'm saying certain things just happen in a way where, you know, that you, this wasn't from your own deep calculations, you know what I'm saying? No matter how much, how egotistical you are, you got to just kind of you know, give it up. And, yeah, like humbly, like, man, that wasn't me right there. That was something else. And whoever it was, I appreciate that, you know? So Right now, people be like, Mills, you doing your thing? I'm be like, man, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> like, I'm, not even, I'm not even where I want to be yet. Like, yeah, I'm doing a lot of great things and like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm hella connected and everything, but like I I still feel like I have a long long journey ahead. You know what I'm saying? But the only reason why I'm at where I'm at is because I have faith. And like when I first came out here, bro, like it was it wasn't it wasn't easy, bro. I I didn't know anybody. I moved out here for a girl, and we ended up breaking up. She kicked me out, and I was homeless, bro. I, I was living in hotels for like a month and a half. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't know anybody, and I had to I had to I had to start somewhere. I had to start somewhere and I had to build myself up to a point where now I'm doing a fashion show for the whole Arizona. Well, that's, that's, that was my next question, man. Like how difficult was it to go from not knowing anybody when you first moved to Arizona to being known by everybody? So I feel like um, what, what really changed that again, man, I had dropped, I had dropped bottom, bro. <laughs> like, I, you know what I'm saying? I had, I had my car, everything was packed in my car. I could have easily been like, mom and dad, I'm coming back home. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, you know what? I'm going to think positive. Everything happens for a reason. God is testing me. You know, he wants to see how strong I am, how much I really want it. And I wanted it, you know? So I started to, I really just started to get in tune with the people that I did know out here. Um, met one of uh, my homies. I actually met a dude at the studio, uh, Mo Rilla. You know who uh, Mo Rilla is? Sound familiar. That sounds yeah. I mean, I, I might be Facebook. 
Okay. Yeah, he's okay. a tough fan. But um, yeah, so I ended up I was at this studio. It was just it was just this random studio, bro. Um named Court Court Capital. He's a videographer and he just be having people at a studio. So I just pulled up by myself, literally everything in my car, just pulled up just to network, just to see who I could meet. And we was all we was just all in there chilling, smoking, and I asked somebody, I asked the whole this in, this in Arizona? It was in Arizona. And okay. I ended up asking everybody in the room, like, hey, does anybody have a stick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody, everybody looking at me like, what? Nigga, a stick? Like, like what yeah. you mean? Well, Mo was the only one who really knew what I meant. He was like, bro, where you from? I was like, man, I'm from, I'm from Illinois. He said, I'm from Illinois. What part? He said, man, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. He said, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. I That's like, crazy. That easy. And I ended up meeting Mo just from me saying, does anybody have a stick? Yeah. Finding somebody from my hometown, bro, which was crazy. Yeah. So then, you know, uh, Mo kind of took me in, man. He let me uh, live with them for, for, for a little bit. And I was kind of bouncing around like different places. Uh, Jordan Allen, um, he's from Peoria. His brother, Dirty D, uh, who got who got killed. Got killed, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so he out here now. So I was kind of just back and forth living with them. I got on my feet, got a job, started making money, started. Uh, I met somebody. One of my, Jordan actually put me in tune with a promoter who was promoting at clubs. And I ended up having a conversation with him, like, hey, man, I do party promotions. I do this. Showed him some of my stuff. And he was like, man, come out to the first night. Well, I ended up coming out. Didn't know nobody. Just ended up vibing, bro. Just ended up bringing all the ladies to the section. He just, like, the vibes was just there. I was, just, I was having a good time. So I'm like, you I don't some know chicks you. with you. You brought some chicks. You brought some chicks with you to the club. So, no. So we was at the club, and we had our own section. And I'm getting all the chicks to come in our section. So like, yeah, I'm going yeah. around the club, like, "Hey, let's vibe out." Yeah. And that that moment, he like, "Oh yeah, I got I got a rock with homie. He know yeah. how, to, how to bring a vibe." So yeah, I'm promoting at, at one club, it turned to two clubs, three clubs, and um, just really started promoting. That's what got me out there. And then I just started building with people. Got in tune with J. Rob. Kind of got into the music scene. Dipped and dabbled. Uh, done photography. Photography has always been a blessing because um, that's just a way that I can network with people genuinely and create something for them, you know, from my eyes. So yeah. um, photography is big if you want to network, especially if you do it just to get into it because you'll meet a lot of creatives, a lot of people that uh, want to use you. At the same time, they might be using you, uh, but if, if you offer free free work for a while just to get yourself out there, um, it's not even really them using you because you're getting their crowd too. You're getting their followers. People want to find out who shot this, you know? So um, I really network like that, bro. Just in all different avenues, to be honest. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, cause I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss the Jew. I'm trying to bring as much value as I can. Like yeah. when, you, when you said, uh, when you, so when you was at the, when you was at the club, you go in, you ain't got, you don't know nobody. You there? You there with your man, um, Mo, Mo Rilla, right? Uh, yeah, but he he wasn't he wasn't like in the club scene. I was just living with him for a while. Oh, so you went by yourself? Yeah, I w I would go every everything by myself, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, so so when you said you was in a section, who you was in the section with? So Jordan Allen introduced me to his promoter friend. So I was in the section with his promoter friend. Right. And then, and then that's the guy that you, that's the guy that you ended up locking in with when he oh seen you hanging out all the, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of got locked in. Um, we got locked in. I started promoting with him and his team. And then it kind of turned to um, um, where clubs would holler at me like, hey, uh, you want to come promote here? And I, and I would be like, yeah. So I started promoting at a whole nother club by myself. And then I was like, hey, bro, since we're already on the team, come promote with me. And um, so we just like, we were everywhere. I got, I got a couple clubs, he had a couple clubs and we were just promoting, we were cross promoting clubs. It was just, you know, that's how all of the club scene started was just from that relationship and him seeing my vibes and seeing what I could do. My cousin out here um, has a party bus business and I didn't even know that I had a cousin out here, but my party, my cousin had a party bus business. So we would get the party bus and that was live. Like people, people, we would take the party bus from club to club, you know? So that right there really, um, really is how people started to know me. You know, like when I, when I walk into a place, when I walk into a scene, I, I dress different. 
So people are like, who is this guy? I look different. I act different. I have a different vibe. So automatically, people were attracted to me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy is somebody. He's going, he's going to be somebody. So that's kind of, I feel like, at the end of the day, yeah, I was networking, but my energy spoke for, for, for itself. You know, yeah. People wanted to rock with, with the energy that I had. And, you know, it's always been like that. Everyone wanted, always wanted to, to come to the parties. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I, I want to make sure everybody's having a good time. I don't even care if I have a good time. As long as everybody else is having a good time, I'm good. That's the good time. Yeah. That's, hey, you, you got me thinking about this line. I, just, I, got, uh, I got this series called Monday Night Lights where I, I drop a joint every Monday. I mean, I'm probably like 41 or 42 weeks in strong, like no, no misses, you know what I'm saying, every Monday. But my last one I just did, I said a, a, a line in there that, that you just kind of made me think about. I said, uh, young nigga, you got a gift, you should give it. And you ain't got to go to it because they coming to get it. But what I say, uh, but they coming to get it. Um, first you gotta, play it. <laughs> I say first you got to go through it before you able to live it. And the word going to travel if you stay on your pivot. You see what I'm saying? Like what you did was you just went in there and used your gift. Your gift was just, like you say, creating a vibe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just from your presence alone, you can create a vibe that's going to magnetize people to you. And then this person is on the side watching everything going on. And now they like, okay, let me open up another door for him mm-hmm. because I see his gift. Let you me rock with him. Yeah. Rock. And, and, it, and, it, and it kept going and kept going to where you are today. So it's like, that's what I meant when I said that, like, the word is going to travel if you stay on your pivot. If you stay in your, in your purpose, if you stay in your, your gift, everything is going to come to you. You know what I'm saying? People, we got this, we got this, you know, oh, we got to go get it. You ain't necessarily got to go get it. You got to be it. <laughs> exactly. You got to be it. And once you be it, it's coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I liked it that man. I like I like how you gotta hear that track, man. I'm gonna have to hear that. Tune in, tune in to that track. Send it to me. Oh you. yeah, I can send it to you so we get off here, man. That's that's yeah. that's one. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, that's probably one of my favorite ones though. You know, yeah. I don't wanna talk too much about me though, you know. Uh what's my next question? I said uh from your experience in no, no, I ain't gonna say that one yet. How did you how did you start making relationships with people when you first got there as a new face? Like outside of, you know, what you just explained, outside of that, like how did you just start getting to know people? Just putting myself out there, getting uncomfortable, you know. Um, of course, me coming from a place where I didn't know anybody to uh, a, a city full of, what well, I don't know how many people here, five million, I, I don't know, but like, me just really just getting uncomfortable, you know, putting myself out there in places and just meeting people, um, get doing doing shoots, you know. Like I said, people feel your your, your energy and they're gonna rock with you. And I was I'm genuine to everybody, you know, and that's what what people know me as is just being real, being genuine, you know, always looking out for my my friends and family. Even if I don't know you like that, I still got got your best interest. So, I guess people really just kind of got in tune with that. But for the most part, just getting uncomfortable, uh, just going to like different events, talking to people, making sure I, I get that, get that info, making sure people know, know who I am at the end of the day. Right. You know, when I walk into a building, you know, I want, I want people to, I want people to feel me. I want people to, to be like, okay, okay. This is, this is, this is a big hitter. This is the big stepper here. So yeah, yeah. You know, like I walk in and I want people to, to, to know who I am by the time I'm gone. I'm walking through, meeting the people that I need to know. Uh, I feel like that was very important, you know, uh, in my life is just getting in tune with the right people because you don't even necessarily have to know anybody. As long as you know this person, you might know 50 people behind them. So I kind of just locked in with the right people, um, just networked with all of them, make sure that they they felt my energy, you know. And uh, it just it just happened. It just happened. I would invite them to things. They would invite me to things. You know, just bring that genuine vibe everywhere I go. 
it, 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 it worked out for me. When you when you speak to when you speak to kings, man, you, you speak to everybody that followed them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So you say, is this is this is this all about the right people? It ain't gotta be a whole, you know, big crowd of people. Just you gotta know the right person. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you and like I said, kind of go back to being it. Like once you know who you are and what you what you out to do, then you know who you wanna talk to. You know who you need to talk to. Like, okay. That's somebody I need to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't gotta be the whole club. It don't gotta be the whole venue. It just the DJ. <laughs> you know. And that's how I'm trying to be. You know, you know me. You know the whole city. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's yeah. How I'm, I, that's how I'm trying to get it. And not even just me. The whole team. You know, like I got a whole team behind me, man. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now without without the people that I met, bro, and the people that that's behind me and in front of me, wherever they at, you know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate everybody that I met here because they put me in, in a position to win, you know, so. That way. Yeah. From your experience in business, how important is making relationships with people? Man, honestly, <laughs> if you don't know how to make relationships, you shouldn't be in business. Mm. Like, that's, that's the main thing. Like, you, you know, whatever business you run, you got to be able to have relationships from the people that work for you to the people that's going to be buying your stuff if you're a shitty person excuse my language but if if you're uh you know a person that nobody likes um you know you're not going to get no business you know if people don't look at you and respect you and what you stand for you're not going to get no get no business if you can't build a relationship with somebody they're not going to give you their money so, so I feel like I feel like that's like the most the most important thing is being able to build relationships and network with, with, with people. That's how you build business. Man, I, I know I know I know this is probably gonna be like a common sense question, but yeah. I, I just I just want to hear your take on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm very interested in hearing your answer. What made you move from Peoria? What made you move from the P? Man, uh really, bro. Just wanting more, you know, man. <laughs> Just wanting more, bro. I feel like um, I was to a point in Peoria where I started to get a little comfortable, and I and I had to get out of my comfort zone. Um, so I, I feel like I kind of reached my pinnacle in Peoria, and I just feel like it was time for me to go. You know, when I'm going to the to, to Forest Hill Liquor, and I'm and people like Mills, you still live here? Yeah, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> I'm like, do I still live here? <laughs> like, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> you see you're right, man. You right, bro. You changed my life. Man, yeah. shout out to whoever told me that, man. Yeah, I mean, changed my life. Shout out to him, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was, it was it was my time, man. I love my city to death, man. I, yeah. I miss my family. Haven't seen my family since last July, man. But I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for my city, man. Like. I want to be a, I want to be a Sean Livingston a, a, a Peoria where I can be able to give back, you know, open up uh, workshops where we can teach people how to be creatives and entrepreneurs and teach people how to do photography, graphic design, whatever you want to do, you know. So I, I got big plans for for Peoria, but I got to start where I'm at first, you know. I gotta I gotta build to that step. How has what you learned when you was living in Peoria helped you since you moved? Oh man, honestly, to be honest, man, and this is probably the realest, it's the realest, like Peoria, Illinois people are different breeds, bro. Like we just different breeds, dog. I, I can't even really explain it, man. But like everybody that I know from Peoria that really moved out that has mentalities like ours, um, they, they win, bro. You know, and like you said, the mind just don't stop. You know, er everybody that I knew, everybody that I hung out with, they have a big outcome of who I am today. If I wouldn't have had the friends and the people that in my life that looked up to me, that motivated me, that I hung out with, that I, that, that, uh, I got motivation from, you know, shout out to Dre Island, you know, uh, Dre Lawson, just all of my friends, Tyler Willis, bro, everybody that was in my circle, man, you know, y'all had an impact of who I am today. Whether it be me watching you or y'all just, you know, just just life, you know? Like, I don't know, man. I just can't explain it. But it, it, it's it's just too deep for me to explain right now. Like, 
like who I am is because of of, of the people that, that I've that I've had relations with, you know, friends, my friends, you know. I told some people, man, like if if if, if we take the mindset that we have from where we from and, and, and use that in a place that we're not from. It's like, like in, for, to your case, for your, to your point, to your experience, like we, we kind of attract people to us in a way. That's what I've noticed. Like wherever we go, we attract mm-hmm. the one, the no, one person. Too. You know yeah. that, that that guy, whoever that that guy is, they we attract them to us because they see something in us, and it's like, and then it's just a domino effect from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like man, and like I've got to the point where it's like, like I moved when I moved to Chicago. It was like you know the the big stigma about Chicago was like this so rough off Chirac, and it's just you know. But like when I start meeting people. They would be kind of like I, I started to I started to peep that it was like they was questioning like, damn, like where he from because this ain't even he thinking this is love. We don't move like that. They they didn't move like that. <laughs> so they like man, wherever he from, it gotta be worse. You know, like they that's not what they saying, but that's what they were saying. You know what I mean? Like because I was loving it. I'm like man, this is. This is nice. <laughs> this is nice. I like how you got your little project buildings and stuff. This is nice. You know what I'm saying? Let me see that gun you got. How many bullets in there? Let me pull the clip out real quick. You know, like they like, who is this dude? You know? Like, so it's like, I feel like when we come from the bottom like that, people can kind of respect that. You know what I mean? They can respect it when when they can feel it, and, and you ain't saying it. I would say that, like I ain't, I oh y'all from here. I'm, I, I came from the when you yeah. ain't saying none of that, but they can like feel it on you. Yeah, I think that's what kind of like bring people to you. And I don't even have to go in the place be like I'm from here. I'm from here. Like, like I, don't, I don't be on that. Like I let people know where I'm from if they ask me. Yeah, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. I'm from I, I say I'm from Illinois. And I'm like okay, well, what part? And I, I'd be like Peoria. A lot of people don't know from from, from Peoria, but um, yeah, man, it's just it's just different, you know. I feel like even the people that are from Peoria that live out that I'm cool with out here, like Kenny Zapata, Cortland Sazon, Jordan Island, like even them, like them is they just different from everybody out here. And at the same time, like people respect them. People like we know how to talk to anybody, you know. Um, like we just have a different a different vibe to it. So well rounded, well versed. Yeah. Well, well rounded, exactly, exactly. Because it's like, like they say, like if you could play in Peoria, you could play anywhere. Yeah. You know, I think that's really true, even with the people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got so many different realities of people, different spectrums of people that, and we don't even see it. Like as citizens, we don't even as locals, we don't even see it until we move. And like we like okay. Like y'all don't talk to them people because you from here. Mm-hmm. But I talk to all of them type of people. <laughs> you know, I talk to the, the mayor, the, the 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 street nigga. I talk to the, yeah. the party promoter. I'm talking Everybody. to the, the stripper. You know, I'm talking to the, the nerd. Mm-hmm. I can talk to all of them. Yeah, and, and you should want to talk to all of them because all because talking to all of them type of people is just is just adding a. a uh, a different playing field for you, man. You know, it's it's, it's going to help you out from how you can adjust to, to talking to people and from dealing with people. So, like, I love weird people, bro. I love nerds, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I like like people that you know that don't necessarily go into the flow. Like, those are the people that that I'm looking at that I'm attracted to. Like, oh, what's exactly. going on here? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on in, in they mind? Everybody thinks differently, but yeah, like why you do that? Like I want to know. Like I ain't saying nothing wrong with it. I want to know why you do it because I yeah. nobody doing it. I want to. I want to know what where that come from. You know, you could potentially learn something from from anybody, man. No matter yeah. who, how old they are, or whatever, man. You could learn something off of anybody. Most definitely. Um. So I see you got a merch line coming. Yeah, yeah, man. So that's um, huh? Now go ahead. 
Yeah. So other than Arizona trending, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna be doing something with that with the merch. But um, man, I'm excited, bro. And it's it's still coming together. Like we're just working on different concepts. But um, a lot of people know me as my fedora hats. You know, the, you know. I was saying. Hats. Yeah. So yeah. I know keep you doing that too, though, man. So we gonna have to, you know, we gonna have to, we gonna have to share that or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna have to, you know, we gonna have to share that. One. Yeah, man, that's that's kind of like my thing, man. That's how people know me, bro. So I was like, man, why why not just come out with my own hat line? So mm. I got a hat line coming up called uh, Don Miliano, and that's where the name is going to tie into everything. Um, Don Miliano, and it's going to be different type, like, for Dora hats. Like, um, they're going to be, they're going to be, like, next up, upscale hats, not just no regular hats. Like, they're going to have jewelry on them. They're going to be expensive hats. So, like, so I want it to be like very, very upscale, classy. Like, I got big plans for it. Um, I got a magazine publishing company uh, with uh, my friends, uh, Lamar Cole and Robert Billings. We have a magazine publishing company where uh, we can get people published in magazines. You know, we have a list of like 120 different magazines and uh, Robert Billings, the photographer, I'm the creative director, Lamar is the designer. So we basically come up with concepts uh, find models and work with different makeup artists and stuff uh, to get people published in magazines. So mm-hmm. I've been published in Gamora, Elements, Lion Magazine, uh, many more, bro, just from me being a creative director. Basically coming up with that concept, um, having Robert shoot it, Lamarck design the clothes. So once I get my line, we're going to be doing a lot of publishings, um, distributions bro like i want to i want to get it out there i'm gonna use my connects my public relation uh network and resources bro just to really get my clothing line out there and i'm looking forward to it bro like that's dope i'm I'm gonna send you a hat man i got you yeah i'm gonna say i gotta tap in with you bro yeah you gotta see your uh logo bro i'm I'm gonna get your logo but we're gonna have to do like a little collab or something on there for sure say no more say no more and on the, on the magazine side, like, is it just for like fashion or or artists, creatives? It- um, so right now, bro, I mean, we we kind of just started the company last year, and we try to do at least six publishings a year. Where last year it was just like free. We just find models. We were just planning different stuff and getting people published. Wow. Um, but um, starting next year, we're actually gonna actually start opening up to like a broader. Verizon of people. So not just models, but artists and stuff like that. The only thing with that is we have to come up just like, just depending on the person we're going to be shooting, we have to come up with the dope concept that's going to get published. We can't just do a shoot and be like, oh, it's going to get published because they're going to be right. like, no, that, that work is trash. So yeah, they got to be as creative as possible. Yeah. Right. So we come up with the model, just depending on the model, we will go over, you know, different scenes, what they're going to wear. Um, but for the most part, bro, we're going to turn it into like an actual platform for everybody, um, just to get them published. So people want to like artists, different, different artists want to get published. Um, they'll, they'll be able to get published through us and we'll be able to get them published in magazines as well. And that's dope. That's dope. Um, so how, like, how did you get into like modeling and like fashion? Like how did, like, how did you go from, you know, photography? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Photography, man. Me, me doing photography, meeting people, meeting these models, and um, you know, going to different events, getting media passes, going to to these events. That was really like what really got me on out here. Um, is me doing photography, uh, other than promoting. But people, people loved my work. People wanted to collab. You know, I got to a point where I was a I was a hot commodity. People wanted to shoot with with Don. You know, I don't really shoot as much anymore because I got other things going on, but. I still like, I love to shoot. I'm, I want to start shooting more, but uh, hopefully after this show, we'll start, we'll start, we'll start getting more stuff going. That's dope. So what is, uh, what is MAS? Like, give me a little brief summary of like what, what that's all about. And how so, I MAS is uh, Miliano Art Studios. It's, uh comes from Don Miliano. It's just Miliano Art Studio. MAS is just an acronym. Um, and uh, we're going to eventually open up a, a, a Miliano Art Studio out here where we're going to have, uh, you know, we'll be able to do everything from we'll have like different events. So like sip and paint, um, we'll be doing events out of there. We'll be doing photo shoots. It's, it's going to be a place where people can come record. It's going to be uh, full of every type of art. 
So right now I'm just working with my investor after this fashion show when we release this Arizona trending. Um, we're gonna have like uh, we're gonna we're gonna be opening up a Meliano Art Studios as well, and uh, we're gonna be having I'm gonna have my clothing line in there. It's, it's gonna be like a mass art place where just people can come and network, have fun, you know, showcase their art. They want shirts printed, they can get them printed. We'll we'll print them out. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a platform, and I eventually want to do workshops out of uh, Meliano Art Studios. And I might be able to, I might have the sense of business your way, man, because uh, I, like, I got a play that I'm working on right now. It ain't all the way fully fully set in stone yet, but like, like I know uh, based on what I'm trying to do, it's going to be like room for upsells, if, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. like, like I'm going to need somebody that can like event plan. It, that sounds like kind of like what you do in a way. Yeah, you know yeah. Yeah. And you got you to gotta resume behind that. So instead of like sending them elsewhere, once they come to me, I could be like, hey, you know, if y'all need that event plan, I got mm-hmm. somebody that can do that for you as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, I'm going to, like I say, I'm going I'm to get with yeah. you on that. I even got social media packages where I, where I manage people's social media, build them followers and stuff. So wow. I got that up and that's all going to be on my uh, website. I got a website. It's just, it's just down right now uh just because i have the uh, arizona training link in my bio but uh, i'll have that in like in my bio and stuff once this fashion show is over but yeah man i got packages where i help people build social media you know anything with building creative marketing promotions um i just try to look at myself as a specialist with that you know i could y'all got a website uh y'all got a website developer already uh, not for miliano art studios but uh i have a don miliano website that that's uh, that's being made. What? Got to lock in with me on that. Yeah, I got you. I yeah, got yeah. You. That's yeah. what we doing, man. Like, I got a marketing agency. Well, it's really a just an agency in general. It's called Sellers and Buyers, and that's what we do. Like we get we get people positioned to be in the field of entrepreneurship. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not saying nothing about your results or what you're gonna have going on. It's just saying with all the tools that we have provided for you you will be able to be an entrepreneur. You can start yeah. receiving money and living at your own pace, you know what I'm saying? And not clocking in and exchanging your time for money, you know? So That's the page? Yeah. You you had already created the page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've seen it. I feel like I see yeah, it. Probably so. Yeah. Okay. Got it on IG. All right. Um, What's my next question? What's the most what's the most important skill or trait to have in business? The most important, man. As as much as I want to say, being positive, because <laughs> you know I'm, I'm I'm all about being positive. Um, the most the most important skill to have in business or trait is being able to manage time, man. Time time management is 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 big, you know. Uh, when you run a business, you definitely want to make sure that everything is on point. Um, and if you manage your time right, you'll be able to take care of the things that you need to take care of in business, from marketing to um, anything. You know, um, I feel like time management, being able to manage your time right is everything because you don't want to overdo yourself either. You can easily stress yourself out, overdo yourself. Uh, by focusing on on your brand or your on your business, and at the same time, like Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm sure you guys hear that a lot. It wasn't built in a day. You can't start a business and it's not gonna blow up in a day. It takes time. And, you know, definitely have to be able to manage your time right. You know, preserve your energy for tomorrow. You know, for whenever. But uh, that's one thing that's pre- that's been pretty important to me. There's a lot of things that's important in business, but. Yeah, that that's got that one that's important right there. You know? Yeah, not to overdo yourself because if you overdo yourself, man, you never know, man. You like in two months, you might not even want to do that that business anymore. Right. I done started multiple businesses and put too much energy in it, and just stopped it because like I overwhelmed myself, you know. And you got to be able to manage your manage your time to a point where you still are building your business, but you're still preserving your energy, you know. And still, you still have a life. 
that way. Time, time is very much time. I'm not even gonna say time is money. You know, time is more than money. It's worth more than money because once it's gone, you can't get it back. If you if you lose mm-hmm. money, you can get that back. You know, exactly. it's it's the rarity. Like the value is measured by the rarity of something, like the scarcity of something. You know. I gotta find my target, bro. My bad. Uh, it's all good. But uh, but yeah, I was just gonna say like that's one thing I always tell myself. Like you got to be careful how you spend your time your energy and your money. Because if you don't spend them wisely, you're going to reap a, a, an investment <laughs> that you don't, that you don't really want, you know? I feel like time is, 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 is definitely more important. Like money, money is nothing, man. I've been broke and I've been happy. <laughs> yeah. Like my investor right now, he got all this money multi-millionaire 26 years old bro multi-millionaire bro got every car you want from a royce to a ferrari got all these cars and he tells me all the time bro like like mills bro i got everything that i want bro but i'm still not happy bro and i'd be having talks with him like man you got you doing this you doing this like you letting too much energy in your life you know what i'm saying and like that's a, that's one thing where people rock with me because i tell them how it is you know what i'm saying i like, I don't tell them what they want to hear. I tell them how it is. Yeah. That's, a, that's another thing, you know, just being real, being genuine, and I build relationships because of that. I don't know where this charger at. So that leads me to my next question. I'm going to try to run through these questions just in case it cut off on us. We got like two left. But All right. are you rich before you get the money or after? Man, you got to be rich before you get the money. You got to be rich, you know, because just like I said, like, like money cannot give you happiness. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm around it. I know for sure money can't give you happiness. Yeah. Like, my my millionaire friends, bro, like, they don't know what to do with themselves, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm happy. I'm not, I'm not broke, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not, like, on their level where I got two, five, two to five million dollars in my bank account. But I'm good, bro, because I'm healthy. Um, you know, I'm I'm comfortable. I'm building. You know, so you, you most definitely got to be rich before. You got to be rich minded before you get rich. Yeah. What I was gonna say. Uh, do you think the Do you think the money, the the millions, is what make them unhappy, or is it something else? No, nah, man, because. The phrase, and I know you guys all heard it, more money, more problems. Right. You know, the, the more money you get, the more stuff is on your plate. You right. know what I'm saying? And so just, just for me watching him and his life, he got everybody that – everybody knows he got, he got millions. Everybody's blowing, blowing up his line and, you know, trying to, trying to get him to invest, you know, and that energy can wear you out if you give too many people your, your energy, you know. You definitely got to be able to preserve that, uh, preserve that uh, energy. How do you become rich-minded? How do you become rich-minded? That's a question that everybody got to ask themselves. Like, it just, it just starts with thinking positive. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's something that every everybody needs to ask themselves. You know, like, do they have what it takes? You know, what do they want to do? Who do they want to be? So what's next for you, Kane? Man, bro, just this fashion show, man. Trying to get this fashion show right. I don't know. Where where the, uh, where the heck my uh, my target went? Give, give me one second, bro. Okay. Yeah, that's one of them ones right here. I can already tell. Oh, here you go. You got you. Okay. All right, fam. What, what was the question again? How do you become, how does one become rich minded? Um, surrounding, surrounding yourself 
around the people that's that that think rich minded, you know, th that are rich minded. You know, uh, training your mind, get getting rid of those those negative thoughts. You become rich minded. You just gotta have that mentality. You know, you gotta have that 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 positive thinking. It just takes a lot, man. But anybody anybody can be rich minded. It just takes with controlling your mind, Tra training your mind to think differently, to think positive. So, would you say would you say that's like the the main sole attribute of of a person with a rich mind is like they they are they have a positive mentality? Is that is that what it you know is that what it if you could put it in a nutshell like what a what a a a, a, a rich mind is? Would you say it's a positive mentality? I would say, um, for the most part, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a lot to that. You know what I'm saying? Um, it really just depends on what people think as being rich-minded. Like, like, what do they want? What, like, like, what do they want in life? You know, if I knew, you know, how they are, who they are, and you know, what they really want out of life, and what they think rich-minded is, I could help them get there. Mm. You know, but I guess it's just different for everybody. Some people want riches. Some, some some people want information. Some people just want to get married and have kids. <laughs> right. You know, but if 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 you want to build and you want to be wealthy and rich minded, as far as to to a point where you know you can be able to put other people in opportunity, uh, how to get there is is a journey. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a lot of sacrifice, sacrificing certain things. Um, I had to sacrifice a lot. Sometimes I had to stop smoking. I love weed, but I, yeah. I, I had to stop smoking for a little bit just because yeah. I felt like weed was holding me back. Yeah, me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes you just. I mean, it's a journey. Things things change. Things happen. You just gotta try your best to understand why that happened and how how that change is gonna affect you. It's going to either affect you negatively or positively. And that's where getting into that positive mindset really helps. That's dope. So, you know, what, what can the people, what can the people, you kind of froze up a little bit. My bad, bro. No, you good. Quick, oh, you get back in here. Oh, what happened? Okay, there you go. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what can the people find you at, man? How can the people connect with you, bro? Yeah, everybody, uh, y'all can follow me on Facebook, Matt Mills. Um, just starting to get my, my Facebook for my page, Don Miliano. That's on there. Uh, it's just Don Million with an O. Follow me on Instagram, Don Miliano. Uh, Twitter, Don Miliano. So you guys will see that, that, that Don Miliano a lot. Got a lot of big plans for that. So follow me on all social medias like that. Arizona Trending, J-Rob the Chief. Make sure y'all tap in. Most definitely. Man, I appreciate it, bro. I know, I know you got a lot of things you got to get to, man. That phone steady ringing. Yeah, I got, I got, I, I got to do a shoot at uh, 7.30, so we, we, we just in time. Right on, right on. Yeah. Well, man, I, like I say, I appreciate your time because, like we said earlier, that's, that's the most valuable thing there, man. So for you to just, just give me some time, you feel me? I, I feel it. I really, I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm expecting big things out of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm already knowing what you got in you. You know what I'm saying? I already know where you come from, yeah. you know? And it ain't, when I see you on a big billboard or, or in a big big screen picture or just moving and shaking how you moving, bro, it don't really surprise me at all. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, hey man, I appreciate what you're doing, bro. It's always been real. You always been a genuine dude, bro. Hey, man, oh I appreciate you for what you're doing, bro, what you're doing for the city, dog. Hats off to you, man. Salute to you. We're going we gonna, to we gonna bring it back here soon. Watch. You already know. You already know. We're going to stay locked in, too, bro. Stay locked in, man. Yes, sir. Much love, bro. Much no love, problem. Bro. Yeah. Love. Yeah.